I give you a new commandment, love one another. Three simple words. It's so hard at times for us to accomplish in our lives. Love one another as I have loved you, you also should love. That Christ shows us the model of faith, that he shows us the model of love by laying down his life for us, his disciples, who he calls his friends. But he also showed love on the cross for those who would call him enemy. And he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's the tough love sometimes that we have to have with and for each other. Love each other till it hurts. Love each other from every moment, every experience, every word, until the last. That's what the Lord is calling us to do. In our first reading today, when Paul was speaking in the Acts of the Apostles, He was talking about how sometimes we feel like we don't have the strength, but the Lord will give us the strength that we need to make it through difficult situations in our lives. He will give us the strength to love, despite seeming like there's no hope in our lives. But there's always hope. We don't always understand, but there's always hope in the good news of Jesus Christ. We hear about that hope sprung anew in our second reading from the book of Revelation, where John saw a new heaven and a new earth, where all of the tears would be wiped from our eyes, for we saw the Lord as he is, and he says, Behold, I make all things new. I make all things new. Many times we struggle with the new. We want to hold on to the past. We want to hold on to what has happened before. Today we give thanks for two new to be baptized young people. We have to continually build for the future in our lives and see the good in every life that we come into contact with. That is the new. We have to remember that the gospel is ever ancient and ever new. Yes, these words may have been written down some 2,000 years ago or longer for the ones from the Old Testament, but they matter just as much then as they do today because Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So how are we allowing the gospel to change our hearts today? What is it the Lord is calling us to do? How is he calling us to become his disciples, to become made new. To hear those three words, love one another. It's that simple. Those words are simple, but in practice, it's hard at times in our lives. It's hard for us to love as Christ's love when we're being persecuted, when things don't go our way, when we don't see an end out. It's hard for us to love one another. The beauty that we see in these children. It was great during the opening prayer when she, Yelitsa was so excited and so happy. She's like, I don't want to be quiet, Mom. I saw Baron jumping up and down and doing a bunch of things. And that's where we find our joy, my brothers and sisters, in the new. Because they are a promise to us of God's love. That's why I know some people don't like kids in masks. Keep bringing them. Please keep bringing them. Because you are here today because your parents brought you at one point to church, I hope. That's my prayer. If not, you've had it here. Good. But that's the model that we're called to model for our children, to show them what it means to be a faithful, practicing Catholic. Even when they're throwing temper tantrums even when they don't want to be here, even when you don't want to be here. Sometimes that's when the Lord works the best in our hearts. When we don't want to be somewhere, when we don't want to do something, that's when we get out of the way and the Lord catches us off guard at times. I find that many times in my life is when I'm not ready for something, that's when the Lord thinks I'm ready. 
when I'm ready, he doesn't want to give it to me. Anybody else feel that sometimes in life? We don't ever get what we want when we want it. But we get exactly what we need exactly when the Lord knows we need it. And as we continue through this Easter season, celebrating more baptism, celebrating more life, it should bring hope and inspire our own faith. That when our own lights of Christ from the Easter candle were lit at our baptisms, when we light those candles for these two, may we remember back to our earliest mem- memory in the faith. And remember those high highs where we experience the love of God. In those moments, it's easy for us to love one another. When we also look at those low lows and see how the same Lord that calls us to love in the extraordinary calls us to love as well in the ordinary, in the dull, in the boring, and in the inconvenient. Jesus didn't say in this gospel, love one another as long as you get along with each other. Love one another as long as you like each other. No. As I have loved, so you also shall love one another. Love until it hurts. Love until it becomes a sacrifice. That is true love, my brothers and sisters. And it's something that we're each called to strive for and we each struggle with every day, myself included, definitely. Because I'm human, you're human. But that means we're all called to grow in our faith. We're called to see opportunities in our faith to grow into who the Lord has called us to be. He's called us to be loved because we are his beloved sons and daughters. That's it. He calls us to be loved. Because when we are loved by the Lord and truly understand and embrace that truth and that fact, nothing, and I mean nothing, can keep us from sharing it. Like that first time that you reached a goal that you never thought you attain. Looking out on social media this weekend with so many people that are graduating from high school, grade school, college, master's degree programs, and just seeing the joy in that, that exponentially is the joy of the love of the Father. When we recognize it, it's always there. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the good news that we're here today to celebrate during the Easter season, but also during every other moment and every other day of our lives. It's a moment that these two are about to experience in a very real and monumental way. That they are going to die with Christ in that water of baptism, that they may rise to him with newness of life, marked with the sign of faith, with the sign of the cross. Christ claims them as he claimed each and every one of us who too have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The chrism that adorned our heads at our baptism was reconfirmed in us at our confirmations. That same chrism will be put on their foreheads to remind them of the fragrance of love. They receive those baptismal garments, or the baptismal bibs, as we have. As they receive those baptismal garments, they are pure in the eyes of the Lord, not stained by sin, but pure. And then as parent and godparent are given that flame of faith, that light of Christ, They're also given the responsibility to keep that flame burning. For that light of Christ is never to be hidden, but is to shine firm, to stand firm, to shine bright in a world cloaked in darkness. To bring faith, to bring hope, ultimately to bring the love that God has for us so that we can embrace it and share it.